live repair video right now. Hi, all you grass rats out there. Hi, grass rats. So today's video is going to be on this here Yari, or maybe you call it a Jari. It's a sickle bar mower, which was given to us back in October from a Carol fan. So this thing is not really antique. I guess it would be because antiques are considered anything 25 years or older. Um, but it is still kind of new because it does have electronic ignition. It's got a little three horse brakes or brakes and scrap them on it. And it had been stored for a long time. And then, of course, when we got it, we had no place to keep it, so we kept it outside. So it's been sitting outside since last October. So, in case you don't know what a sickle bar mower is, there's blades up here, and this thing moves back and forth. So it's almost like a, like a giant hedge trimmer. And then right here, we got a lever. To engage the make the belt tight, belts make it loose. So that'll engage the uh, sickle bar. And then it's got a drive, a self-propel, which is just some cogs that rub on the wheels, and then that lever's here to engage the drive. So judging from the looks of the belt right here, it's burned. Something is locked up on this. And that's why it burned the belt. So either the sickle bar or the drive system, something's locked up. Well, it's not the drive. So it's probably the sickle bar. But we'll address all that once we get it running. So the first thing we're going to do is see if got compression on and spark. So I'm going to take the spark plug out. As soon as I go over here and find the spark plug side. So this looks like it's a little three horse. Well, that was loose already. It's got the original plug in it. Still got the blue paint on it. And judging from the looks of the plug, it's not all suited up. So the engine's probably in good condition. So well, why am I putting that back in? Take that out. Compression tester. Here's the spark tester. Alright, so let's see. Got spark. And we got over 90 pounds compression. So it's probably just. Dirty carburetor, and then find out why why that belt got smoked. We'll have to put a new belt on it. Hopefully, I got the right size belt since we're doing this live. But I got hundreds of belts, and I got just about every size. seeds in there from something so this is garbage some kind of seeds 
Maybe Fluffy was in there. See if she'll run and die. Pull this off so we can get a better look. At the carbon trader. We gotta get a socket wrench. Okay, pretty dirty, chokes working, so since it's so nasty and dirty under here, I'll take it outside and we'll give it a pressure scrubbing. Uh oh, somebody's here, slip. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Terrell P. Slippers here. Yeah, you're ruining our live stream, Slip Man. What? I yeah. just wanted to check it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, try to stay out of our way. All right, I'll see what I can do. All right, so back on here. Now, it's got this debris, debris screen on here, which is held on with three springs. So you just unhook the springs. This one's hooked. This one's hooked in here on the carburetor. Never seen anything like that before. Really? As old as you are? Yeah, with those springs on there like that. Oh, I thought you meant a sickle bottom mower. Oh yeah, I've seen a billion of these. All right, this spring is giving me the fluff. It don't want to come off. All right, that's okay. We'll just let it hang. What I do with that other spring? Can I hang it from there? Oh yeah, thank you on there still. <laughs> Alright. So only one came off. Alright. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape and stick it on. Oh, let's take a look in the carburetor or in the gas tank and see what we got. Oh, uh, looks like there's some water in there. But it's clean. 
The tank is clean. It's not all rusty. Yeah, good luck trying to get a tank for that if it's all rusted up. And let's, uh... Because they don't make it anymore. <laughs> all right, Slipper. Thanks for your little parts input. Let's check the oil. Oh. Which I should have did before I was starting it. Got oil in it. It's a little low. Pretty dirty. Alright, let me block that off. Put something over this. So when I give it a pressure scrubbing. Piece of duct tape. I'll keep most of the water out. We're going to be taking it apart anyway, so. And here I got my little tank sprayer. Ugh. Got some soap in it. Supper. Soak it up real good there, Pa. I sure will, Junior. Junior's operating the camera. Hi, how you doing? I noticed some people talking about the uh, the volume of the microphone. Yeah, it's it's just off the camera. We tried using an external mic, but you know how technology is. It doesn't want to cooperate. All right, so I'll try to speak louder. Can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Because we're using the microphone that's on this phone. Here's an idea. Turn up the volume on your speaker. That might help. <laughs> so let's soap it up. Make sure you get the front there. Got some people Where? from Sweden watching. Wow. Okay. What time is it there in Sweden? What time is it in Sweden? If you didn't hear me. Shout out to your moderators. Oh, yeah. I think he said 11. 11? I don't know. Night? Something like that. So we have four Seven, moderators. 7 13 p.m., I guess. Same as Denmark, another guy said. So it's at night. Yeah. Some people say they can hear you loud and clear, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. So I want to give a shout out to our four moderators. Mick is one of them from Mick's Mowers. Hi, Mick and Riley. Pete Froud, another grass rat from over there in England. Uh, I got the tea, Pete. The tea is good. I like the tea, even though Mick probably says it tastes like dirty socks. Well, I like the, I like the taste of dirty socks, okay? So I got the tea, Pete. Been, been drinking it every night. That's why I'm all amped up, because that stuff's probably got a lot of caffeine in it. Um, lawnmower... Lady, lawnmower lady. Hi, lawnmower lady. That's Slipper's girlfriend, lawnmower lady. <laughs> and Ken Small Engine. I believe he's a, he's in England too, right? Ken Small Engine? I think he's in America somewhere. Is he? Okay, well, hi, Ken. Thanks for moderating for us. Thank you to all our moderators. I think I got them all right. There were four of them? Yes. There's also some other ones that we had thrown in, but I don't know if they know that they're moderators. Clean it up real good like there, Pa. It's going to look like brand new once you give it a little scrub. Oh, we got a $11 super chat. Thank you. Eliminator oh. Performance. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know those guys over at Eliminator Performance. How you doing, Eliminator? So yeah, there's this, uh, you can donate. So in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little dollar sign back there. And if you click on that. 
Super Chat, they call it. Super Chat. Pound that like button and that Super Chat button. <laughs> this yeah. guy needs some new slips. $20, Chris Grimes. Thank you, sir. Oh, Thanks, awesome. Chris. They're There's definitely a... going to my, to my new slips. <laughs> Thanks for your They're working on the shopping plaza back there. They're getting some units fixed up for rental. And the guy, the construction company, are using Champion Generator. And they're going to run it out there. For the past couple of weeks, hear it? That thing's been running out there the past couple of weeks non-stop. Gotta get the job done. There's some guys working. Yeah, there's a guy on the road just putting new air conditioning units in. Same color when I restored that mop mower. I painted the handle that green. Yeah. This looks like it's a royal blue.
down from that. Here's a bolt that's hanging out. Hobby motor, 100 bucks. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Very generous of you. Yeah. Thank you. So here's where that nut goes. This bolt here. What it is this for the drive? Oh, yeah, I see another nut on the other side. Good luck trying to get that in there. All right. Scott, sixty-four, twenty dollars. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Got the best fans out there. You guys are the best. Love you guys. We appreciate you, Grass Rats. like a jam nut. Let me see if this thing still moves. Yeah, see it won't move now because I hammered it down tight. So you got to set the tension on it. There we go. And then when I get in there with octopus fingers, maybe Gregory Scott, eleven dollars. He wants to know if you know anything about Yazoo mowers. Haven't seen too many of them. I think we had one in here. One Yazoo. Why? What's the matter? What's wrong with your Yazoo? You would think Terrell would have them up the Wazoo, but I guess not. <laughs> Yazoo's up the Wazoo. I think we had one in here since I've been here. I've been here since '08. Yeah, I don't see too many of those anymore. Not really, no. Not and again, I think we had one, and I can't remember what it was in here for. But we fixed it. Now the next three hours is going to be him trying to thread that little yep. nut in there. $20 from CM, thank you. And another five from Trevor. Appreciate you, Trevor. Thank you all. You all are the best. Keeping us going here, keeping the lights on. All right. Let me try pulling this off the front. Yeah, I think we had one in here. 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 Yeah, I how you doing there, Riley boy? Hi, Riley. All right, what else is going on in there? This guy says he's just a fan of the skits. Hey, we like the skits too. Check out the Terrell Fixes All Skits page. We just posted a new old throwback skit on there this morning. That's for just the skits only. A lot of funny stuff on there. I'm sure you haven't seen all of them. All right. Looks like it's locked in on there, don't it, Flipper? Yeah, it does. So I'll use the plastic hammer so I don't... Thank you, Gary. Yeah, we figured that out. Got a little tabs on there, it looked like. Yep, locked in right in here. Okay. That'll make it a little easier to get to that nut. Sorry if I missed anyone's super chat. I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing here.
this tree. It looks pretty fun. Octopus fingers. And I got it. <laughs> no, gotta find the right tool to get in there. I might have to take this wheel off. So I can get in there. There's all kinds of stuff wrapped around this cog. Grass. Not a lot of room in there. Got that pulley right in the best spot. Why couldn't it have fell off, fallen off the other side? Yeah. Thanks, Sea Bass, for the 20 bucks. Sea Bass. Just like in Dumb and Dumber, Sea Bass. We got Terrell falling over live. That's not the first time he hurt himself. Why don't you let him know what happened to that schnoz there, Pops? So I was working on this lost sweater, and it's right outside. I haven't picked it up yet. There's that lost sweater. That thing's a beast. We did a video on it. We haven't edited it yet. And we videoed me splitting some wood, and then we got done filming, so I wanted to split the rest of the wood, so I had a piece in there that was kind of knotty, and I was splitting it, and all of a sudden it got real tight and started making noises, and boom, it sounded like a bomb going off, and the next thing I know, I'm getting hit right in the face with something. And of course you can't see, you know, because you're looking out of your face. And I put my hand down like this and it was just blood was just pouring out. And I thought, oh, this is bad. This is bad. I broke my nose. So I went in the shop and started rinsing all the blood and everything off. But luckily, it's just a cut on the top of my nose. I thought it was going to be worse. I thought we're going to be doing this live stream. I'm going to have raccoon face, black eyes and that. But it must have hit me right here and here. So that happened, what, like Monday or Tuesday? And I got snot running down my nose. You got lucky, Pa. Jethro Tull, awful one. Snot running down my nose. I had blood running down my nose. So not only did that thing split wood, it split my nose. So that's what happened to my nose. Could have been worse. Yeah, I got lucky. So yeah, knuckleheads operating power equipment, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of y'all. You can grab that shirt in our online store, TerrellFixesAll.com. Grab some uh, merch, t-shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, all that stuff. Help support the channel. So this is kind of neat. It's just a bolt with a grease fitting on it that's drilled out. So you can grease the wheels and then it's got a wick inside there. I like to call it a John, a John wick. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. It's pretty corny. That's right. Hold that slippers, make oh, yourself useful. No problem there, guy. So it's just to grease this big old wheel. This wheel is pretty light. It looks heavy. Yeah. It's hollow. Pretty light. David White, $2. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks, David. Now, if I can get the nut on far enough, I might be able to get in there with a ratchet wrench. All good, Brad. Thanks for watching. Hard to get down in there. Yeah. Tight. 
All right, now, I think there's enough room with the ratchet wrench. Ooh. Hold it, Slipper. <laughs> it's not heavy at all, I'm not sure how. We got 3G Craftsman, 499. He's asking who writes the skits. Oh, me, obviously. Most creative guy here. That's man, baby. <laughs> we all write them. We all kind of write them. Sit around and brainstorm, type them out, make the script, write the scripts out. Got to hear, Ray. All right, now I can get it on there. Now, now, the, now I can't get it to ratchet. Now I can't hold the ratchet. How's your knees holding up, Terrell? Good. I'm on this pad. I'm kneeling on a pad. Four dollars. Thank you. Arcani Pre Prey. We got one guy saying this, the uh, sound is too loud. <laughs> Too loud from Junior, too soft from Terra. I don't know. It's probably because the mic's on the side. Stupid ratchet wrench. I'll be able to hold the ratchet part. There we go. I got more room in there now. $10 Volkswagen man. Appreciate you, bud. Oh, that's Corba. Sean. He said, uh, Jen has been asking him about your nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. He addressed it a little bit back. Log splitter done Log blew splitter up. Bit me. Piece. It didn't hit me in the mouth. Would have knocked out my beautiful teeth. Or the throat. Or my throat. Or your eye. Could have been bad. Got to be careful. All right, we got her tight. They'll move. All right. So that's done. Good thing we found that when we were giving it a pressure scrubbing. Yeah. Could have been blown apart when you're trying to use it. Was there more crap over here? Mm, I don't think so. so no, we'll... that's just grease. More stuff up here. Yeah. That's easy to get at. So yeah, there's a washer on the inside here, it looks like. Well, it looks like it's the same on both sides. So this wheel's symmetrical. You can, it'll go on either way. In case you wear it on one side, you just flip it over. I see the rubber. <laughs> it's got a bunch of cracks in it. It's starting to dry rot. Cause it's old. <laughs> no. Let's uh, let's locate the model type and code, and see what year this engine's from. So before we do that, Grass Rats, why don't you give your guess? I gotta remember, I gave you some clues. It's got electronic ignition. It's got. A non-adjustable carburetor on it. There's no adjustments on it. So that'll help. And here's the model type and code over here. Hold on, we're not going to show you guys. Let the grass rats guess. 92, 96, 1980, 79, 99, 84, 81, 83, 77, 86. A lot of different guesses. 70s, oh, 80s. Keep going. Some of them were close. 91, 77, no. 86, 82, 1857. <laughs> that was my guess. 76, 59, 94, 89, 76. Hey, 89 is the winner. 1989. 89. Now you can show it. It's an 80202 model. And the first two, can you see that? 
Or do we need to put a flashlight on it? Yeah, I should be able to see that, I think. 89. So, electronic ignition came into effect on brakes and scrap them probably around 81, 82. I might be wrong. All right, so let's get the carbon crater off. Be sure to hit that like button. All you people watching, hit the likey. So we got a bolt down here that holds on the tank. We'll take that off. And that screw back here is kind of hard to get at. So I'll take the blower shroud off. And then we can oil that, uh, oil that wick. Oil that John wick. That's on that starter clutch. We'll use some gel lube, which we sell. That's good stuff. In our online store. We want you to hold that up so you can see it. Got one underneath with a three eighths. And we need a seven sixteenths. Grab some gel lube in the online store, terrellfixesall.com. Made in the USA, all Velcro products made in the USA. Isn't that a Bruce Springsteen song? Made in the USA. Made in the USA. Made in the USA. Yeah, I, th I think so. That's what it's called, right? No, it's born in the USA. Uh, oh, 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 Brett J with the five dollar super chat. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate you, bud. Can you get the knives for the cutter? Someone's asking. I don't know. It looks like they're riveted on there. Buff small engine, thirteen ninety nine. Appreciate you. I'm sure it'll it'll cut. They look. It doesn't look like it's been used much. Yeah, still got the paint on there. So I'm gonna blow this out real good. Sorry if that's a little loud. And then I'll spray some gel lube to lube up the spring. Lube up that spring. There's an opening in here. You can spray it in there too. And on the end of that is a wick. There's a little cloth wick in there, almost like what was on that wheel when I took it off. We'll give that a, a little lubrication. All right. Appreciate all the super chats. You guys are great. Let me get my tray, because I'm already starting to lose it. This is Terrell's first live stream fix. We did a couple other live streams, but never a fix. So this is groundbreaking stuff here. I don't know, is any you grass rats know anybody else do like a live fix? On the channels you watch? Because there's millions of channels out there. Check out that Honda Z50. That's not mine. Trying to fix that thing up. Key, key word is trying. Of course, he needs my help. You're the master. So I help him with the engine. So these screws they got on here breaks and scrap them. They're real hard to get at. I even made a special wrench and ground it all down because it kind of helps get in there. So you got to kind of get it loose and then get in there with a screwdriver. And then 
and then the other one over here is underneath. But I'm going to take this off so it'll be easier to get at. So I need a Phillips. So the guy that gets 1989, he don't get nothing <laughs> other than gratification. Other than being the person that was right. Mechanic, the mechanic. $25 or 25 something. I don't know what kind of currency that is. Appreciate you. Thank you. I'm going to buy this guy a new pair of slips. Boy, does he need them. Look at those things. Check out them shoes. Sure, it's comfortable to walk around with them. They, everyone likes your shoes. Oh, if, mine? My shoes? Yeah. yeah. These are Skechers. They're waterproof. They're comfortable, and it's nice because I'm always pressure scrubbing stuff out there, and I would wear, like, different shoes, and they'd get wet. My feet would get wet, and then your socks get wet. That's no fun. The next day, your, your feet start stinking like Earl Grey tea. <laughs> right, Mick? Because Mick says, I like Earl Grey, and he says, you might as well just... Take a dirty sock and put it in boiling water, and that's the same as Earl Grey tea. <laughs> He's making fun of the tea I like. <laughs> and what does he drink? He probably drinks some foo foo tea. Banana. William with the five dollar super chat. Appreciate you, bud. Thanks, William. Y'all are the best. They're asking, is that a Pulsa Jet carb? I believe so. Kind of has that look to it. I believe it is. There is one adjustment on it right here. That's a low speed. Yeah, I believe this is a pulse jet. Be sure to smash that like button. Governor spring right here. So now I need a little, little pair of needle nose. I'll hook it disconnected from this side. There we go. We'll just let that hang there. This is the air vein. And the spring goes from the air vein to here. That's our governor's, governor's spring. And we'll disconnect the link. I like to call this a Lancelot link. Remember that old TV show? Yeah, that's showing my age there. All right, now we can get that spring where that cover was hooked in here. And I think we'll get that off. Oh! Making a mess there. Oh, you see that water oh, in there? I didn't have this thing in there all the way. Yeah, here's the water. Way to, way to go, ding ding. Bubbling up. Over to the, what'd you just call me? Ding ding. Way to go, oh. ding ding. Look. Shout out to Carla. She always uses the ding ding. Carla's watching. And just to let you know that today is my 40th wedding anniversary. I've been married 40 years to Carla. Yep. Happy anniversary, Terrell. I was married to her the whole time that she was married to Bob. <laughs> I know that's illegal, but it's only illegal until you get caught. We didn't get caught. Now it's all straightened out. So come and get us. ZRKN1, $20. Thanks, bud. All right. So there was some water in the gas, and it had old gas. And if you notice, on the gasket, there's two sets of holes. So on the older carburetors, the engine, the carburetor, carburetor 
mounting screw was up higher was where this hole is on the older models. And then they must have got a lot of complaints like, you know, from guys working on them, like, hey, man, you got to move that hole, break some scrap, we'll move that hole, it'll be easier to get at. So then they moved it further down. But I believe, let's look at the block. Let's go back and look at the engine block. Let's see if both sets of holes are in the block. Yeah, see? There's for the older carburetor, and that's for the newer one. So if you had an older carburetor that you could actually adjust that wasn't a non-adjustable, you'd be able to put that older carburetor on here. see what what's in store for us in here this is a pretty easy carburetor to work on as long as the tank is good these tanks are hard to get I don't know do they make them aftermarket I don't think so they used to I thought not that I've seen they don't even make the pickup tube anymore either Okay. Yeah, they don't make this anymore. Wow. You can't buy this. I'm trying to face those babies out. Yeah. You can't buy this tube. A lot of times this tube will get cracks in it. We have other videos on this carburetor. So what you would do is if they didn't have this, or if your tube was cracked, that's 3 16 tubing. You can go to the auto parts store and get a piece of brake line and just grind like a radius on one end of it, and then you could drive it back in there. And you got two ways of, of fixing it. You can either just make the, the tube this long, you just won't have a screen on the end. Just have it so it's like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off the bottom of the tank and it'll pick up the fuel. Or you could do like they do on a chainsaw. You can get a piece of hose and put a piece of hose on there and then get yourself a, a big fuel filter for like a, a stilt chainsaw and get one of these in-tank filters. They come in different sizes. This one's got quarter inch. And they also make it a 3 16 They make a 3 16 one. This is a wall bro. One for a chainsaw. And you can just shove it on the end of the hose. And then since it's 3 16 tubing, you know, you can shove a piece of 3 16 hose on there. Just let this lay in the bottom of the tank. That'll work too. That way, you know, that's if you want to have a filter on the bottom. But ours looks good. I don't see any cracks. A lot of times what you'll have to do is take a Scotch-Brite if your tube is all crusty, like crusty one. Hi, crusty one. <laughs> I wonder if Muskie's watching. He might be. And then when you scrub it, a lot of times it'll expose that crack in there. Because we've had them with a hairline crack. So this is the main leg of the carburetor. Some of these have the main jet is in the bottom where this freeze plug is. On some of these carburetors, there'll be a hole in the bottom. That's your main jet. On this one, it's on the side. This is our main jet right there. So when you look in the, in the tank, this is like a little float bowl. And if you notice, it's cut, it's cut away. So how this, how this works is once it starts running... 
this is a fuel pump. It starts pumping the fuel out of the tank and it dumps it. There's a hole on here. It dumps it out of this hole, that fuel. So this will pull it out of the tank. It starts dumping fuel through this hole, which fills up this little compartment here. So this is your float bowl, basically. And then when it fills up this float bowl, it just cascades over the edge and goes back into the tank. So while this thing is running, it's constantly pumping gas and filling that bowl and dumping it back into the tank. So that's how that works. And then, of course, it's going to pull the fuel through your main jet and then distribute it or spray it through the carburetor, and that's what's going to make it run. So it's pretty simple once you know how it works. So we'll have to scrape all this old gasket off. See now, if we had an edited video, we just cut right through all this. They like seeing the work though. And we get a gasket scraper. We tried using one of the mini mics and it didn't work. We got one, it just it didn't work. We couldn't get it to work. There was no audio when we plugged it in, so. That's why we got to use the phone audio. Sorry if it's too loud or too soft or. Be sure to hit that like button. If this is a successful idea. We might improve upon it. Yeah, we might figure out a way of maybe. There's got to be a way to hook that expensive camera we use. $20, Chris McComas. Thanks, bud. Oh, we know Chris. Hey, what's up, Chris? Shout out to Chris. Hey. Portage in the house. And I'll blow all this out. There's not a lot of crap in there. Can we grab that air gun for you? Yeah, you want to hear it? Do that. Blow this out. Come over here. So now I'm going to take this cover off on the side, which is the, where the fuel pump goes, and we'll see if this is hard as a carp. About him, Junior. Sorry, Pa. I love the air gun. It's my favorite tool. Yeah, we know. Constantly blowing stuff out. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's still soft. But from the cap, you know, it did kind of put a ridge in there. We're going to put a new one on. It's the original one, too, I can tell. Okay, so we got our cap and our spring. Let me get my tip cleaners. Let's see if I got one small enough. I don't know if there's one small enough. I had another set of tip cleaners. I don't know what happened to them. Oh, okay, probably grab them. How much of a donation to make slippers go home? <laughs> Uh, 10 cents. <laughs> real nice. Real nice. All the, all the things I do for you around here, that's how you do. What, the hardest working guy that hangs out here? What are you, James Brown now? <laughs> he was the hardest working man in show business. No, but he actually worked. I was working. He I just didn't claim, out. he just didn't claim to work hard like you. I blew that tank out for you. That was, that was a lot of hard work. James Brown actually worked hard. You ever see him on stage in concert? That guy was a ball of fire, all sweaty. Where's that blowgun at? Right there. All right, watch your eyes. Uh, I like that term. Watch your eyes. Now, how you'd have to wash your eyes by plucking them out of your skull. All right, where's those guitar strings? Those are missing too. I got a set. 
Ah, oh, I know where to find them. Over on the elk skin's bench. If you can find it in that mess over there. <laughs> All right, let's make sure that this hole is clear. It's a pretty good sized hole, so maybe one of these will work. Nope, there's a smaller one. Yeah, that one fits. It's clear. All right, so now I'm gonna spray I'm going to spray through here. All right, that's the one that dumps into the tank. So spray through this one. All right, that's the one that pumps it up and dumps it back into here. I'll spray out that hole a little bit and we'll pull the screw out. low speed. Pull that out. Yeah, the tip of it is a little, a little crusty one. That's coming through our main jet. All right, so let me blow it out. And I'm going to back it out one and a half turn. We'll start at. So we don't want this. So slipper already went ahead and got me the diaphragm. Oh, the number got right ripped off. Got knocked off of there. You find me that number, slipper. This is a shop pack of them. 4168 is the shop pack. But the number got erased. Here's the tank gasket. Shop pack 4158. It's 10 of this is the number for the actual gasket if you just wanted to buy one. 492241. So we got the gasket. Let's put the cup and the spring back on. Put the diaphragm on. Now you notice it's got an extra hole. So that's for a different model, but it works on these. He brought me uh, new intake manifold gaskets. These are Rotary brand. They come in a pack of 10, 1498, or if you want to buy just the regular brakes and scrap them, 27355. We're not going to use these. This gasket still looks good. I'm just going to use this one over. And you can see on this one, they did use two of them. Ram 
number is uh, 27. 27. 25. 25. 38. 38. S. S, as in Sam. As in slippers. Oh, as in slippers. Rusty Machine Shop, $20. Appreciate you, bud. Well, thanks, Rusty. He wants to know where Ronnie's at. Well, he's well, out now that you said his name, he's probably going to show up here. He's probably living out in that junk and stuff shed. He's probably still sleeping. Okay. Yeah. Go out there and wake him up. That always happens here at the shop. We'll, uh, we'll be doing something, and somebody will say, Hey, we haven't seen that one guy in a long time. Whatever happened to him? And I go, Well, now that you mentioned his name, he's probably going to show up here. Sure enough. And sure enough, they end up showing up here. All right, there's the gasket. Again, it's got multiple holes. So it fits other models. Where's that? Never mind. Okay, there's the tank. And look, that little float wall area. Crusty it's got some crusty in there. Crusty like me. <laughs> So I'm going to take a scotch bright, a piece of scotch bright, and get out my spider knife. Whatever happened to your $200 knife? I broke it. Now it's not worth anything. It was an antique knife, too, from 1946 or something. So I remember I looked it up, and they were selling for $200. That's why I call it a $200 knife. And I broke it. I should have just uh, I should have just put it away and not messed with it. Yeah. Being there, twenty dollars. Thank you, bud. Thanks to our moderators. Thanks to all you guys for watching. Be My sure to the best. be sure to smash the like button there. Oh yeah, I want to thank Pete again for those toys. Those Star Wars figures are awesome. Thanks, Pete. Really boosting up my collection. Don't you want to say anything to Longmore Lady? What's up, Longmore Lady? Thank you. I think somebody's got a crush. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> All right. I got it as clean as it's going to get. It'll be okay. Put this back on. Keep them bunnies coming. If you like the funny skits, check out our new channel, Terrell Fixes All Skits. It's just all the uh, funny sketches from the past. We just posted one this morning. Christy, starring me. I turn all demented because of a lawnmower, Murray Tractor. Got me possessed. And we got to crush it. Well, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin the ending, but yeah. Go check it out. Terrell Fixes All Skits. Subscribe. I don't want to ruin the ending, but I just ruined it. Yeah, sorry. All right, so we got our vent tube back on. All right, I'm going to get some more coffee. Okay. Ten dollars from Northern Ireland. Ten pounds. Wow. Thanks, mate. Mark Gaines. That was to get rid of slippers. All right. Well, you got rid of me. Well, it's probably night over there. Otherwise, I'd say top of the morning. Top of the morning to you. How about bottom of the night to you? Bottom of the night to you. Okay, so now let's reinstall it. All right, put that put on. Put some juice in there. Come on. Took up our length. We're a little over an hour in. Our lamp's a lot length. screws that's what the screw looks like on some of them some of them some of the newer ones got a torx it'll have a torx uh it'll be a, a hex head like this but it'll also have a torx in the center of it even though i brought that tray I still lost one of the bolts. All right, so 
where was the one that went in the bottom? This is the one that went in the bottom. It's got that little serrated lock washer around there. Get that lined up. spring now I gotta find that screw where'd it go ding ding even though I brought the tray out I still lost the screw see this happens all the time and then the next thing it's caught Lobos with $50, $50? I don't know what SEK wow. is. Foreign currency. Here it is. Thank right you, though. Appreciate you. Right in front of my blind eyes, it was in the tray. Of course. All right, so we got them all started. Now I can go and tighten them up. My special wrench, which only fits on the bottom one. See, it doesn't fit on this top one. So you gotta use the flats. You think they would have, you know, made a little bit better design when they, they've made this engine forever. I think when they were developing it, they would have went, let's do something better. Let me get a heavier screwdriver. Where's the knee pillow? There's the knee pillow right there. Jamie, $11 Canadian, $11 Canadian, thank you. Y'all are the best. Thanks for watching. There's the knee, knee pillow. All right, here's a big heavy screwdriver. I can get some leverage on, because I want this thing tight. Thanks to Dennis Cullen for sending us all kinds of uh, free tools. Now this bottom one I can get with the wrench because they moved it. It made a lot more space. Well, let's tighten this up down here. Our choke link. Goes in like this. It's got two different ends on it. So this one goes in here like that. And this goes in the top like that. Let's hook up our kill wire. Here's our switch. Our pin, there's a pin here. This pin goes in here. Let me take this back out. This pin here goes in there. That's for our throttle. So we can throttle it up and down, see? It's putting tension on that governor's spring. If we wanted to add more RPM, this tab that the governor's spring is hooked to, you could bend it. So you would bend it, it would put more tension on the spring and you'll, you'll get more engine RPM, more top RPM. All right, so let's hook this back up. That goes in the top. Our little pin drops in there. I got the wire, the kill wire hooked up. Now we gotta do is put our screws in there. Cooter's Garage, $7, appreciate you, bud. Thanks, Cooter. That's from Dude's a hazard, Cooter's Garage. I know, I know all this old TV stuff. He's old school. Hello, Governor. Governor? Hello. Sir. 
Thanks for all the super chats, you guys. You guys are great. You guys are amazing. Rusty Machine Shop, $5. Well, thanks, Rusty. Asking about Ronnie. I don't know. Something tells me he might be popping in at some point here. He better hurry up because uh, Terrell almost got uh -oh. up. Oh. Great. Who's that? Here. Spoke too soon. I told you. Hey, what's going on? See? Ah, oh, great. As soon as you mention people's names, they show up. I'm on that live thing. I was just watching it out at the junk and stuff. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ronnie here. Good old buddy. How's it going? Going pretty good till you got here. What? Come on. It's your Uncle Ronnie. Now, I'm going to be busy filming this, so don't be stealing anything behind my back. Oh, oh yeah. I won't, I won't do that. <laughs> Look, something's over there. I'm watching you. All right, now I'm going to put the blower shroud back on. Sometimes you got to get a little, little tub to get it to line up. Chris Grimes, thank you. There's another one I missed too. Um, let me see if I can find it. Berlan Frog, $20. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks again for all the super chats. If you want to grab some merch, terrellfixesall.com. T-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies. Check out our skits page as well. Terrell Fixes All Skits. Page? You mean channel? Channel, whatever. Ain't the space shuttle, it's YouTube. Tighten that plug? Yeah, I must have. All right. Way to go. So let's put some dinosaur juice in there. We'll leave this off for now. Did you fill it up with oil? It was a little low. See, now I oiled that up. It's working a lot better. Another, another way to determine, I found over the years, when you're working on a piece of equipment, you know, if you look at the rope, That'll kind of tell, give you an indication of, you know, how much it's been used. Look at when I pulled this rope all the way out. Look, it's like brand new down here. Even though it's from 89, it's just barely an antique. Thanks to Don for giving this to us. Terrell fan Don, I don't know if he's watching. Yeah, I wonder how much I can sell this thing for when it gets it done. Get your grubby hand <laughs> off of it. He just had it sitting out in that yard. Figure you get it all tuned up for me? Just because it's sitting out in that yard doesn't mean it's for you. I thought it was fair game. Well, maybe I can go around do people's yards, you know, make a couple of bucks. Hey, at least it's an honest living for once. Hey, you need some help? Yeah, Ronnie's here to help you out. It's got plenty of oil in it. All right, good. It's just a little bit low. Cap scratch fever? Is that what you got, Pa? Yeah. You don't our want that. Our working, our choke's working. I hate it before I go on. It's not starting. Gotta pump up a little. Great. I can smell the gas. A lot of times you gotta give it a little help just to get it primed. There you go. Sounds like an ignition problem. Hey, why don't you try changing that plug? Maybe put something in there from this center. Try some pressure washing it. Oh yeah.
It's popping. I can smell it. What you find, Pa? Look at that. Skin through. Ground that, That's been chewed on. Fluffy done chewed yeah, on fluffy it. Fluffy had got in there and chewed on that. Well, there's no fix for that, so you might as well just give it to me now. The only thing I'm going to be giving you is to chuck it over the fence. Oh, no, no. All right, I'm going over that fence. It's never fun. So I got some liquid tape, which you can buy just about anywhere. I got this at our local hardware store. Liquid electrical tape. Good stuff. Got a little brush in the cap. Get a little mix. Let me touch up that mustache of yours. Ugh, ugh. Let me put some sideburns on you. Come here. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Junior, hold them. Yeah, I don't hold think them, so. I, I gotta film this. Ugh. Get over here. I don't need sideburns. All right. Let me brush some of that on there. So yeah, we disturbed that wire when I took it off. You want to see Ronnie go over the fence in real time? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that stuff dries pretty fast. No, I gotta, I gotta snake it in. See, right now we be putting the snake. <laughs> yeah, see, you guys gotta add those in when I do them. And the seal. Er, er, er. All right. There we go. Now, I'm going to try to put that in an area where it's not going to be touching anything. Any metal. Five dollar rusty machine shop. Appreciate you. Ronnie's paying Fluffy, he says. Uh, what? How did he know? That uh, Ronnie's too cheap. Yeah, you're right. I ain't got money for that. Fluffy's paying me to be his friend. And Fluffy makes everybody money. Small engines, automobiles. can't see anything else, but I saw that wire. Good eye. What they used to say at the baseball game. Is that eye. what? Good eye. Good eye. When they were pitching. Yep. Right down the pipe. I don't know what pipe they were talking about, but yeah. Got compression on, right? Well, we had it running on starting fluid. And it popped off. Maybe that plug is ancient. It is from 1872. Dry. But it's crusty. Got almost 2,200 people watching.
it. Popping and sputtering. Let me get a new ball. So, Ronnie, how's life out in the shed? Well, you know, won't be freezing out there. <laughs> Sitting by the fire trying to warm up. One of them garbage can fires? Oh, yeah. The way to go. Nice. Come on, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Hit that fan on, Ronnie. I'll get it. I gotta get it. Otherwise, well, I'll be sleeping in here. Let's load it up into my chair. Mac Mac all the way back. Thanks, bud. 20 bucks. Appreciate you. Well, let's see if it'll move. I need to free up that yeah, sickle. That, that sickle bar thing ain't moving. Bump it up with some grease. All right, let me get a grease gun. It probably hasn't been greased since 89. <laughs> what happened to my grease gun? Here it is. Oh, I don't know. Don't look at me. That's the first person I'm looking at. I don't know why he's only playing the knee. Alright, it's taking grease. Brian, thank you, bud. Appreciate all the super chats. You guys are the best. Those grass rats are the best. You guys got the best grass rats. Who knows if this thing was ever greased? Like I said, taking a lot. 89. Well, I start to see air coming out in the front. And it's starting to get hard. Oh, yeah, there's coming out in the back. Right, right here. Oh, yep. yeah, look at that. First time for a greaser. Now, let's, uh, let's spray a bunch of gel lube on the front here. Free those babies. First the shop. Appreciate you, bud. Before I change that belt, let me see if I can get it to start moving with the old belt. Let me get it past that bad spot. Maybe once we get it moving. It might free up and this looks like the adjustments here for your height on how high or low you want to cut. So maybe we'll loosen these up, put it in the highest position. We gotta have a Wi-Fi connection, right, for that phone for this live chat to work. Yeah. So, I'll have to stand in here, I guess. And they can zoom in on me. I, I don't know if I don't think I can zoom on here. We'll just have to watch it from a distance. I'll 
And then we'll see. Oh. Whoa! Careful. Tripped on this stupid thing. You've been accident prone lately. You're like that one-eyed Willie. I'm like, yeah. I am a knucklehead operating power shaking and vibrating real bad is because every time that flat spot on that belt hits a pulley it makes it shake and the same thing will happen to your lawn tractor if you've got a lawn tractor and the deck is shaking real bad chances are you've got a flat spot on your belt or you might have a piece of wood a chunk of wood like a stick or something that got wedged into one of the V's on the pulley, because we've seen that. And every time that belt hits that chunk of wood or that flat spot, it's going to make a shake. So hopefully I got a belt. All right, let's kind of study the way this thing goes over the top. Pretty wild. Yeah, it looks dangerous. So let me undo it from the bottom. Ronnie, stand in front of it. Yeah, I don't think so. And then pull it off the top, snake it around there, make the snake noise. All right. It didn't look too bad. Now, let's see. I might have to take that over now. I might have to take that off. But then I, that flat spot, I should be able to get it through there. Let's see. It's just got there we go. There you oh, go. That gave us some room. Oh, you got them all organized? They're not just they're not just all thrown up there randomly? came off on that pulley on the bottom. That's what I'm going to put it on. Now we got to disengage, gotta disengage this. Here. Here, let me fire it up for you. <laughs> for some reason, it seems like it's a lot tighter, even though it's disengaged. Maybe it's a 65 and a half. Ah, oh! Tripping again on that. 
He's all excited to go measure that belt. What you got on there? Said 65. It was a little over 65. What else we got up there? Like we got a 66. We got a 67. I'm afraid if I force that 65 on there, as soon as I start it, it's probably going to keep running the whole time. Jerry Suter, $49.99. Thank you, bud. You're awesome. I think that might be one of the biggest donations yet. $100. $100 was the highest? I don't remember. I've been trying to keep, keep track of what's going on here. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. You're all wonderful people. There's no adjustments around any of them pulleys or anything? Well, now I'll turn it all over again. Well, I've been around some stuff. Nope, it don't look like there's any adjustment. Around well. <laughs> no adjustments on there. Wow, that's surprising. Yeah, you think maybe the pulley would be slotted or the engine, but don't look like it. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I testing purposes we'll leave it on there until I get the right belt. Yeah, it's got a little bit of tension on it, it wants to keep popping it in the gear. Let me put the air cleaner on. Air cleaner gasket still looks good, it's not poor. Tighten them down. I'll have to look through my catalog, see if I can find a belt. That's like 65 and an eighth. Yeah, these gates belts usually got a little bit more. They're a little bit bigger than the size, they say. Yeah, because even it's got the number on there. 68, 65, which is a half by 65. And that we're using that MTD belt, which is a close to a 65. I don't know. I may look up that number. Maybe one of you grass rats can look up that number that was on that sleeve. They might say it's like 64 and 7 eighths. Because they do that. Steve Janik, thank you. They do that with some of that belt, and then we just round it up to the next size just to make it simple. So here's the clean and air filter. This is a rotary brand. 
And again, you can get all these parts from our friends at ProPartsDirect.net. Check them out, ProPartsDirect. Tell them Terrell sent you. They'll give you five bucks back, or five percent back after you order. They're supposed to go back and refund you back five percent off your order. So hit up ProPartsDirect.net. They're good people over there. Ronnie just said he loves pro parts, so. So, you notice this has got a little vent on here, and then it's got a sticker on the back. So, of course, yeah, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to put it this way. It probably really doesn't matter. If anything, it might pull some warm air off the motor. Okay, it's done. It runs. Let me let me top off that oil. I got a little bit in here. That should be enough. Yeah, I looked it up on that number. It says half by 65. I'll just order another gate belt. Does that one work? Or maybe Yari uses an odd size belt. And that might have been the reason it smoked that belt too. It might have been too tight. Got that dinosaur syrup. Oh yeah. Yeah, it wasn't low at all. There was hardly any oil in here. A couple of ounces. Make sure these caps are tight. That's what these little, these little tits are for. Usually the front one leaks. So I always like to tighten that front one up. You gotta be careful though, because it is plastic. Yeah, this one was loose in the front. You're not gonna use that front one. So that one I tightened up pretty good. All right. We're almost to the end of this video. You're uh, probably sad to see us go. I'm going to yeah. take this thing across the street. Again, we're going to lose signal, so uh, I'm just going to hang out. Having a lot of fun. We can't go too far out of the shop. Maybe I'll go down there with them and then come back and report to you, let you know how things is going. I'm going to try to go right across the street here so we can see. See how far you can go before you lose too much. How are we doing? Still working? Gotta watch out, car's coming. Is it working yet? Good? Okay, good. Thank you guys.
good. I know I said I was going to adjust it all the way up. It cut through them. I wanted you to bring them trees over here to show one. That's why I gave them. Oh. You a knucklehead. It cut through them little trees that were out there. Now I noticed when I released this, this was kind of rubbing on there. I'm going to try to sweep that out of the way a little bit. Probably turn that fan off. Oh. And maybe it'll let it go down a little further. Check it out. It cut through that little sapling. Wow. Chopped it like nothing. Kind of locks in better. See, I tweaked that out of the way a little bit. Got some kindling now for my fire later. Because you can see where it was rubbing on there. You know, it's a belt guy. in better now that I tweaked that little belt guide out of the way pretty nice little tool for clearing man it cut through that yeah those little saplings let's see if these will loosen up these adjusters I'm having fun with this live stream yeah going pretty good are you guys enjoying the live stream? You enjoying the watching it? Watching it live? Pull back on the handle, get it off the ground. No, no, push down. There you go. <laughs> These are probably frozen too. Oh, I see it moving. They want to know what the RPM is on it. They think it's running a little too fast. All right. Put the tack on there. We'll put the tachometer on there. That plastic camera still here? here? They're also wondering why you're not doing your happy dance. Wooing. Saving that for the very end. I forgot. Alright. Set her down. Look wow. That. Look at how high it is when you set it all the way up. Wow. It's up pretty high. Let me get a tape measure. And I'll get the tack out of it. Whoa, whoa. That little three horse motor, it seemed to have plenty of power. It was cutting right through them sapling. So that thing is up about four and a half inches to where the cutting knives are. Let's see what kind of RPM we got. And it's starting now. I don't even have to choke it. Usually these bridges you got to start it at least once on choke. Yeah, it is running a little high. It'll be all right. Those motors are tough. A little extra yeah. RPM. We'll get a little extra horsepower. Turn it down a little bit right there. Should we go out and chop some more with it? You can. I'll zoom in this time now that I know that that works. I tried doing that in the test run and it wasn't, wasn't working right. That's all right. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can pick them up now.
a little too thick on that one. is way ahead of its time. I didn't know it had self-driving mode on it. <laughs> yeah, that was, they call it attack mode. Isn't that something? 1989 and uh, still a disregard for safety. You'd think there would be some kind of dead man switch on this handle. This thing could just drive by itself. But it cut, it cut pretty good size. It, it killed it on that one that I tried cutting through. But when I just went at it gingerly, it did cut it down. I had to lower it back down. Now I got a bunch of little stalks sticking up this high. I'm going to keep this thing because we film a lot in that field. I know the guy that owns that, that piece of property, and he doesn't care that we go out there and cut on it and stuff. He says he don't care. And we film out there a lot. So now I can take this thing, and I can make trails out there. So that way when we test something in film, we can actually have some trails to ride through. So I know some of you grass rats are probably thinking, oh man, I'd like to have that thing. I hope he sells it. Well, I was going to sell it, but that just came to me when I was out there. Well, hit me up. I might be selling one. Oh. <laughs> Not this one. No, well, yeah, yeah. You scumbag, get out of here. Yeah. I'm going to put it in self-driving mode. Oh. Tied to one of them trees oh, and just ready to go after you. Real nice. So there you have it, grass rats. Live stream, Carol Live. Got the seed of process and how we actually fix something. If this was to come in, if this was a piece of customer's equipment, that's what it would have took to get it fixed. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell with this scumbag Ronnie. Junior's on the camera. Hi. Check out our web store. I'd like to thank all of you for donating and stopping in to check this out. Let us know if you liked it. We'll possibly do another one. We'll get better microphones and all that stuff, but we just want to see how it goes. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! I'm doing my dance. Got the Yari going. Going and working. Man. Woo! This thing is nice. You know what it's time for? Time for a cocktail. Time for a hams. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks to our moderators. It's 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning our time? Yeah. Got to gotta have a subvelatory, sub you know what I mean, subvelatory ham. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Thanks again, grass rats. I love y'all. And there's your dinner. Woo! Hey, what are you doing?